April the 27th saw South Africans celebrate 22 years of freedom and democracy. And this inspired Yudhika to come up with a special menu celebrating local flavors and cultural diversity. She's lined up an exciting smorgasbord of tastes and treats packed with spices and surprises. Red meat is a favorite among South Africans, and I happen to have a great love of South African lamb. We're celebrating South Africa in the kitchen today, and on the menu, curried burravos, slow-cooked lamb shanks, and for dessert, a spicy milk tart. We're starting out with the base and the first ingredients from cake flour into a mixing bowl. And you might be wondering why I'm making a milk tart, because you can buy them quite easily. But a homemade milk tart is absolutely amazing. Now, Next ingredient, a teaspoon of baking powder. And then salted butter. The butter should be quite cold for this. And next, work the cold butter into the flour. This mixture should start to resemble breadcrumbs quite soon, and that's ready. You don't have to use an electric mixer for this. It's so quick and it saves on the washing up. Now, sugar going in. and lightly work the sugar into those crumbs. And lastly, an egg yolk. A touch of iced water going in, and careful not to add too much, or the dough will be too soggy, just enough to bring the ingredients together. The dough, or should I say pastry, has come together quite nicely. And I've got a 25 centimeter grease pie dish here. And now I'm just working that pastry into the bottom. You don't want the pastry to be too thick. Lightly prick the bottom of the base. And this is to prevent any steam pockets in the pastry. Get some paper here and place the paper on top. And now I've got some dry sugar beans here and I'm going to pop that on top of the paper. This is called blind baking a pastry and it prevents the pastry from rising too much. This goes into a preheated oven 170 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. It's time to get on with the filling and for that I've got three cups of full cream milk. Heating that up. And here I've got a mixing jug and the egg yolks go in four egg yolks. And lightly beat that. And remember, while the milk is coming up to the boil, stir it around to prevent the bottom from scorching. Add the butter to the warm milk. And a few cardamom pods. When you're using cardamom pods, remember to count them in and to count them out before you serve as well. Add the flour to the eggs and work that together. Add a little hot milk to that eggy mixture. Always remember it's hot ingredients going into cold ingredients. If you're struggling to do this with a fork, you can always use a whisk. And now add the sugar to the milk. And some vanilla paste. You could also use vanilla essence. It's about a teaspoon and a half of vanilla paste going in. And a bit more hot liquid going into the egg. And call this my insurance policy to make sure the egg doesn't scramble. Pour the eggy mix into the hot milk and stir. Use a whisk just to make sure it doesn't get lumpy. I can see the cardamom pods floating to the surface. I think now's a great time to count them out. There's about six in here. The mixture is starting to thicken quite quickly. I've whisked the egg whites with about four tablespoons of sugar until it's stiff. Now, the hot mixture going into the egg whites. Let's do half first and then the other half. 
and lightly mix that. It's quite a light, spongy mixture. And then the remaining liquid. All the last little bits out. There we have it. That pastry case should be ready. Let's have a look. That looks perfect. Let's have a look. Remove the beans and the paper. Pour in the filling. And pop this into a preheated oven for about 35 to 45 minutes. I'm going to start with the lamb main course now. I've started out by preheating a pan. It's important that the pan is really hot so we can get this meat sealed. Sunflower oil into the pot. And now, place the lamb in. It does splatter a bit. So just be careful when you're working with the lamb and turn that over. The lamb's browned. Remove it from the pan. Touch more oil going into the pan. And now fry off the onion. Season the onion with some salt. Not too much, I'm going to use stock in this recipe as well. The onions are ready. Now carrot goes in. and some celery. Garlic going in. Rosemary and a few sprigs of thyme. These are from my garden. Place the lamb back into the pot. Now pour in some stock. This adds lots of flavor. I can't resist adding a bit of Indian spice to this. Say about three teaspoons of Indian rub going in. And this has cinnamon, cardamom, cloves, bay leaves, and coriander seeds. For an added bit of decadence, you can add some butter. This is optional, of course. The beans go in in the last half hour of roasting. This is ready for the oven. I've got two sheets of foil here. Just wrap that tightly over the edges. Now this goes into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about an hour and a half. Remember, after one hour, add the butter beans and let it cook for another 30 minutes. Now for the curried buri. Starting out with preheating the pan. And I'm sure this recipe was created out of just trying to keep burravors from drying out. It's become a family favorite. Sunflower oil in the pan. First ingredient, cumin seeds going into the pan. There's a fragrant, add in the onions. Season lightly with salt. Curry leaves going in. This was normally cooked in my home on a Sunday morning and after a Saturday night fry. The onions are golden brown. In goes some garlic. I like it quite spicy. In goes some red chili powder, say about a tablespoon. Mix that around for about three to five seconds. And then some plump ripe tomatoes chopped going in. Add some spices, about a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. And then cumin, coriander and garam masala, a teaspoon of each. Now boiled water going in. The sauce is quite thick, it's time to add the burravos.
reduce the heat and leave that to simmer for about five minutes, which will give that burro boss enough time to absorb those curry flavors. And that's the milk tart done. I've left it in the oven after it's been switched off for about 10 to 15 minutes, just so that it doesn't crack too much. Now some cinnamon going on top. There we have it. That's done. It's still quite warm. The lamb's ready. It smells fabulous. In the last 10 minutes, I've removed the foil just to get some color on the meat and now garnish with some fresh thyme sprigs. Just breaking these apart. I don't mind the stalks. And now the burrowbos. Scoop that up, put it into a plate. Garnish with some fresh coriander. This is my interpretation of a South African feast. We've got curried burrowbos going with crusty bread to mop up that delicious tomato chutney, lamb shank slow cooked with butter beans and a hint of Indian spices, and for dessert, a luscious milk tart. I hope you enjoy the feast.